Hey everyone, 10 minutes until service starts.
just five more minutes until our service starts. Please find your way to a seat, get comfortable, and be prepared to enter his presence.
Hi Ebenezer family and friends, Pastor Brian here. Welcome to Ebenezer's Sunday worship service. If you're watching online, either live streaming or viewing at some other time, thank you for making us a part of your day. Those of you who are here in person, it's great to be together. What a privilege to be able to gather to worship and celebrate God, learn from His Word, and fellowship together as a family. Just a few things as we get started into our morning. Please take your phone and scan the QR code on the screen or on the connect card in the seat pocket in front of you and that will take you to our app where you can let us know you're here. You may also request information, share any news or updates, and give to our ministries financially. Another way you may access our app is by texting our church phone number 306-249-0084 with the message CHURCH. Please touch base and let us know you're with us. If you're watching online, either through Church Online or YouTube, please type something in the comment bar so we know you're watching. Our online hosts would love to interact with you. A couple of announcements today. Our sermon series, Hearing God, is not meant to be an information exercise. Rather, we want to learn to hear God together as we move forward together as a church family. In addition to our Sunday morning message, we have a practical midweek seminar going on that we would love each of you to be a part of. Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. is our main opportunity in person and by Zoom. Please join us. Ebenezer Women, your Tuesday morning going deeper time will focus on this. Junior youth, senior youth, and college and career are also going through these practical times at their weekly gatherings. Don't be left behind. In fact, wouldn't it be great for families, housemates, or life groups to be learning and experiencing together what it means to hear from God. It's not too late to join in. If you need more information, please contact us. Finally, we will be having baptism services on November 28th. If you're interested in being baptized or would like more information regarding baptism, let us know through the Con Connect app or talk to any of the staff. That's it for me. Looking forward to a great morning. Please stand and Robin and the team will lead us into worship. For all of us to uh, join our hearts as we start to engage in worship with God today. So would you join us in that? Thank 
sent your son we just are so thankful and we were in darkness before you came and so we thank you for coming and offering us this chance for redemption and re reconciliation and restoration God thank you for that We were waiting without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law of prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Yeah. 
its breath Till the stone was moved for good And the land had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel and shall not faint By His blood and by His name In His freedom I am free for the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you truly are the one and the only, our holy God. What a joy to come together into your presence. We lift up our hearts with thanksgiving for your loving care for us. Thank you for your hand of protection daily. You are our great physician. There are many in our family that need your healing touch. Even now, may they feel your presence with them as you comfort and heal. We ask for your anointing on Pastor Layton as he presents your word for us. Prepare our hearts to hear from you and that we will respond with obedience. Father, as we go forward from here today, I pray that you will be glorified in all that we do and say. I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. As Leighton comes, kids, rush time, so you know where to be. Leighton. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming today. It's good to see you. Good morning, people in the balcony. It's good to see you. Uh, for those that are watching online today, thank you for tuning in. If you are new to us today, we're in the midst of a very, very powerful sermon series called Hearing God. And to help get everyone onto the same page this morning, I want to do a quick one-minute summary of where we've journeyed so far. In week one, we addressed the question, does God still speak to today? And our conclusion was uh, simply, absolutely, yes, he does. Uh, in week two, we asked the question, why does, do we need to hear God's voice? And we said that it's because it's foundational for all those who want to truly follow uh, Jesus. Henry Blackaby puts it this way, if the Christian does not know when God is speaking, he is in trouble at the very heart of his Christian life. And so we said we need to hear God's voice to understand the Scriptures. We need to hear God's nudges and promptings so we know how to serve Him. We need to hear His voice to truly know Him and His love for us. And we need to know His voice to truly live because in Him is life. Then last week, we answered the question, how does God speak to us? And we learned that God primarily speaks to us through His written word or logos. In other words, the best way to hear God's voice is to open up our Bibles and read His written or Logos Word to us. Because as Pastor Kell said last week, the more we read His Word, the more likely we are to receive a personal or a rhema word from Him. Now today, I'm going to continue our series on hearing God by looking at some of the other ways that God commonly speaks to His people. Now, if we were to just even casually flip through the pages of Scripture, we would clearly see that the God of the Bible is a speaking God who regularly, regularly spoke to his people and his children. For example, listen to what God says in Job chapter 33 as he speaks to Job. He says these words, For God does speak now one way, now another. Or another version says again and again, though no one perceives it. In a dream... In a vision of the night, uh, when deep sleep falls on the bed, as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears, or he may whisper in their ears. In the Old Testament, we know that God spoke many different ways. It says in Hebrews chapter 1 that in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. And that same passage goes on to say, but in the last days he has spoken to us through his Son. And that's exactly what the Gospels revealed to us, that when Jesus walked on this earth, God spoke through him. He was the, the Logos, as Pastor Kel said last week, the living, the breathing Word of God. 
just like it says in John chapter 1. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling place among us. But of course, um, as you know, Jesus returned to heaven. And since that time, the Bible tells us and you know, God continues to speak to us through His Holy Spirit. It says in Acts chapter 1, that in the last days, and those last days mean uh, the days from Jesus' ascension right up to today. It says that God will pour out His Spirit on all people. He says your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Young men will see uh, visions, and old men will dream dreams. And that's Peter quoting the prophet Joel. Now, even though I'm going to speak today on how God speaks to us, I want you to know that the how is not as important as the fact that God actually speaks to us because he doesn't speak to everyone in the same way. God has created us uh, unique with different gifts and abilities and different temperaments, and he speaks to us as children in, in a variety of ways. So if you're one of those people here today and you've heard God's voice in, in a grand and miraculous way, you are not more blessed or more spiritual than the person sitting beside you who thinks they've heard God's voice in a whisper or nudge. The key question really for us is, are we able to recognize his voice when he speaks to us? And do we listen to what he says and obey what he tells us to do? That's the key question. Now, here's the plan for this morning. I'm going to begin with a short teaching on six ways that God speaks to us today. And then in the second half of the sermon, we are going to hear several true stories from real people that you know and trust of how God has spoken to them. And I think that this, uh, this service is going to be incredibly powerful um, as we listen to those stories, but also incredibly full. So let, let's pray, and let's ask that God would open our ears as we, as we uh, uh, are here this morning. So Father, again, just as we come to you, May you uh, open our eyes and may you open our ears that we might hear your voice today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, let's jump right in. Uh, one of the ways that God speaks to his people is out loud in an audible voice. Uh, this is how God spoke to Samuel in the Old Testament. He called out his name audibly, and Samuel, who was about 11 years old at the time, clearly heard it. In fact, uh, he thought it was the temple priest Eli calling him, and so three times he got up and went over to Eli's room. Uh, now, we can read that story for yourself in 1 Samuel chapter 3, but, but this is uh, kind of what happened. Uh, it says that in one of the verses, it says that Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him yet. And Eli finally realized that the Lord was calling the boy, and so Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and, and, and laid down in this place again, and then the Lord came and, and stood there, calling out as he did the other three times, saying, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And for Samuel, that was the beginning of a life of hearing and obeying God. We read in the Gospels that God spoke to his son in an audible voice, which those around him also heard. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. God also clearly spoke to Saul in the book of Acts in an audible voice that he understood and that those traveling with him heard as well. You know the story in Acts chapter 9 of his conversion of Saul, and it says that as he was on the road to Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground. And then he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And the conversation happens after that. And it says in verse 10, the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless because they heard the sound but did not see anyone. Now, these three examples are only a small sample of the many times in the Bible where people heard God's audible voice. Now, I've never heard God's audible voice myself, although there have been at least two occasions when God's voice was, was so loud in my mind that it actually gave me a start. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you before. Um, but even though it's not a common way, God speaks to his children out loud. And in a few minutes, you're going to hear the story of someone who has heard God's audible voice. 
Now, I'm just curious. You don't have to put up your hand if you don't want to, but, but is there anyone here today that says, yes, I've, I've heard God's audible voice. He, he spoke to me. Anyone want to? Okay, there's, there's at least one, two people I see, so that, that's good. Now, that's probably average. It's not common. In fact, one study said that, that less than 10% of evangelical Christians would ever hear an audible voice. And yet, growing up, uh, that's maybe one of the things that distracted me from hearing God's voice, because when people talk to me, they sound like they were talking to God out loud, and I never had that experience, so I just thought, I guess I'm not hearing God's voice, okay? Uh, here's a second way that God speaks to us today. It's through angels, and again, we see this happening many, many times throughout the pages of Scripture. You know, we see uh, a- angels talk to Abraham and Lot and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and Gideon and David and Daniel, and Elijah, and then in the New Testament, Mary and Joseph, and the shepherds, and even Jesus, and Philip, and, and Peter, and Paul, and John. Now, this shouldn't surprise us because the, the, the word angel means messenger. And one of the jobs of an angel is to bring God's message to earth, to the people. Now, again, a couple of quick examples from Scripture. Judges chapter 6 is the story of Gideon. And it says that an angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak at Oprah. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said to Gideon out loud, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And if you know the story of Gideon, that was the beginning of him um, trusting God and doing a miraculous uh, event for God. In Acts chapter 6 or 8, we hear the story of, of Philip, just again, one example of many. And it says, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go down to the road, uh, down the desert road, and that leads to, to Jerusalem from Gaza. And so he went there, and he met someone, an Ethiopian uh, eunuch. And uh, if you know the story again, uh, God used that moment to bring the gospel or faith to this Ethiopian eunuch who went on and brought that back to his country. It was a very significant moment and kind of the beginning of the spread of the church. And God sent an angel to speak to Philip to do that. In Hebrews, um, Hebrews 13 tells us that angels are active in the world. Now, uh, it says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Now, that's an amazing verse of Scripture. Now, I know uh, several people, including my wife, who believe they've had an encounter with an angel. Now, I say believe not because I doubt my wife. Uh, It's it's because because sometimes it's hard to know, did I have an encounter with an angel or or didn't I? You know, if they announce it, then you can say, yes, I did. If you saw their wings, then you can say, well, yeah, I guess that was an angel. But, But most of the time, things come into our lives when we're not aware, but when we look back, we go, that was, that was uncommon. Like something happened there. Now, God still speaks to people through angels. And again, in a few minutes, you're going to hear a story of an angelic encounter. Now, I'm curious. Has anyone ever, do you, do you think you've ever heard from an angel had an angel, angelic encounter? Anyone? Okay, some of you guys are really shy. I hear these, these little hands going like, like this. It's like, you know, I want to wink at you and say hi back, you know. But uh, don't, don't we're going to keep on going here. It's okay whether you have or haven't, and it doesn't matter whether you've had something miraculous. But again, there was, I saw a few hands out there of people that have had an angelic encounters. Okay, here's the third way that God sometimes speaks to us. It's through the miraculous. And again, we read in the pages of Scripture that God spoke to Moses in, through a burning, burning bush, uh, Balaam through a donkey. Um, he used a fleece to prove his word to Gideon. And he terrified a pagan king, King Belshazzar of Babylon, by handwriting a message on the wall as he and his guests watched. Now, that's, that story is recorded in Daniel chapter 5. It's actually remarkable. This is what it says. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. And the king watched as the hand, the hand as it wrote. And his face turned pale, and he was frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. And by the way, at this point, he didn't even know what it was saying. He just saw the hand there. And so God, God speaks to us through the miraculous. 
He refuses to limit himself to just one way of communicating. He can speak to us, uh, use anything and any means he wants to, to communicate his will and his wishes for us. And again, in just a few minutes, we're going to hear the miraculous story of how God spoke to a couple at a time they desperately needed to hear from him. So again, you know, if we can get a little bit more assertive there, uh, has anybody heard God through the, a miraculous event? Okay, so I, I see again a few people. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is not to put people on the spot. It's I, I want I want us to see that God speaks to people today. It's not just in the Bible times. Okay, here's a fourth way that God speaks to us, and that's through dreams and visions. A dream is when God speaks while we're sleeping. And, and not always, but usually there are, there are visual images communicating God's word and will to us in a dream. You know, for example, in the Old Testament, and again, this is, there's many examples, but uh, Joseph had two dreams about his future, and it's recorded in Genesis chapter 37. One was the uh, sheaths of grain bowing down. Do you remember that? Another one was the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him. In the New Testament, we see the Magi who were warned in a dream not to return uh, to Jerusalem in Matthew chapter 2. Now, visions are similar to dreams, except those receiving them are actually awake. So they're not sleeping. It's, they're awake when it happens. You know, so exam for example, God appeared to Abraham in a vision confirming a promise to grant him a son in Genesis chapter 15. In the New Testament, we know that the Peter received a vision in Acts chapter 10, transforming his attitude towards the Gentile people. And by the way, uh, God speaks in dreams and visions to those that aren't his children too, to the unsaved. In the Old Testament, again, a pagan king named Nebuchadnezzar had a vision of God concerning his future in Daniel chapter 4. In the New Testament, Pilate's wife had a dream about Jesus and warned her husband uh, that he was innocent and, he, and that she, and he, he shouldn't condemn him. In Matthew chapter 27. And even today, if you do any reading in, in missions, you'll know that there are many, many stories of people, uh, especially uh, from the Muslim background faith, seeing Jesus in their dreams or having a vision of Jesus and making a decision to follow him. Because God wants to reveal himself and his purposes and his ways to all of mankind. Now, dreams and visions are actually a common way that God speaks to us today. You remember the, the Acts 2 passage I quoted earlier, that God told us that in the last days, dreams and visions and other prophetic experiences would become commonplace. And today you're going to hear uh, probably one, if time permits, maybe even two stories on, on a people that had, on someone that had a vision from the Lord. Now, again, I want to ask you, how many people have had God speak to you through a vision or dream? At least you think he has. Okay, so again, a few more. So as, as, I'm, as I'm going here, I'm going from the, the least common to kind of to the most common way. Okay, so here's a fifth way that God commonly speaks to his children today. It's through other people. Uh, it's, it's a very common way. Um, and probably one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit has given so many speaking gifts to the church. When we read the gifts of the Spirit, uh, we see that there are several gifts given by God to communicate His truth to the body. For example, one of the gifts is the gift of preaching and teaching. So that's what, that's what we do when we stand up here on stage. And God in the Scripture used preachers such as Peter and Paul and Apollos to proclaim the truth of God's Word. And we know from Romans chapter 10 that preachers are, are essential for, for people to hear God's Word, that, that we actually have to go and we have to speak at times so people can hear God's Word. And so, so when, when people get up or you proclaim the Word of God, you're, you're letting people hear the voice of God through you. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, when you receive the Word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as words of men, but as, as it actually is, the Word of God. Okay, and that's the mystery even for us here, that, that when we stand on stage, and believe me, when we come up here, there, there's a fear, and it's not just a fear of getting up in, in front of people. There's a, a fear of, 
handling God's Word correctly as we share it with people that are listening in person and online. Prophecy is another of the gifts lift, listed in the New Testament in Romans chapter 12 and uh, Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And, and prophecy is, is basically someone hearing what God is saying to a person or a group and then passing it on to them. And in the Old Testament and New Testament, they're, they're just filled with these prophetic words that people are passing on. I don't know if you've ever had a, a prophetic word, and sometimes a prophetic word can be like a, a, a warning or an announcement or something in your life very personal. And they can be public words or they can be personal words. And then closely connected to that is, is the words of knowledge or wisdom, which, which we read about in 1 Corinthians 12. And, and again, um, my, my background, if you're new to us, is, is not charismatic. So the things I, I'm sharing with you are things that are, are um, I probably in the past discounted or doubted. But uh, I think it was about a year and a half ago now, I think it was basically the beginning of the, the pandemic, uh, three people came to this church, led here by God, uh, from Germany of all places. And just the timing of everything, the, the day they came, I wasn't busy, um, you know, I was open to receive from them, and they came in, they wanted to know about the revival that we had here many, many years ago. And I remember we were just sitting up here, and I was sharing the story of our church, and, and then they were talking amongst themselves, and then they said, you know, we believe we have a word from God for you. Can we share that? And they were very kind ab about everything, and, and again, their, their story of getting here was very miraculous, and and, and they, they spoke a word of prophecy or a word of knowledge or wisdom over me, um, which was incredibly powerful. And so, so I've had that experience. And again, if that had happened 10 years ago, I might not have been open to it, but it happened then, and I was very open to listening to what, what was being said. Even this morning, just before I, I came on stage, someone shared a vision they had about uh, a similar event that was prophesied there. And, and so it's interesting to me how God wants to speak to us and encourage us. Now, we're going to learn, you know, that not every word that we, comes into our mind is from God, right? That's, that's true. So I'm not saying that you know, every thought or every person that comes is an angel. You know, I, but what we are saying is we need to be attentive to what God is doing. And in two weeks, we're going to learn about how to balance this out to say, how do we discern, is it really God's word? The sixth way that I want to share, and the last way this morning, but not the last way that God speaks to us, is through His still, small voice. Oh, by the way, I wanted to ask, how many people have had a word of, of prophecy or had a sermon speak to them or someone? Okay, again, a few of you. Uh, thank you for those that didn't put up their hands. I'm up here every Sunday. You know I'm in the room, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. It hurts a bit. <laughs> Okay, the, the sixth way that God speaks to us is, is through his still small voice. And this is the most common way that God speaks to, to his children. And it's been one of the ways that God has spoken to me, me most often. And that comes in the form of a, his still small voice can be also called like a whisper or, or a nudge or a prompting or a word. I remember when we were looking for a women's pastor, and I won't share this, a lot of this story, but I was sitting at my desk, and I was thinking, like, God, who do you have for us? And all of a sudden, this, this name came in my mind, and I wasn't, this person wasn't part of our, you know, the, our regular work world or whatever, and it was, the name was Grace Sawatsky. And I, and I thought, Grace Sawatsky? That's a great idea, God. And so I, I gave her a call, and, and the rest is history. She's here and doing a great job. And I think you would agree that, that she's called by God to be here. And that, that came from a prompting from God of which I obeyed and followed up on. And actually, that, that story is miraculous. If you ever want me to tell you more about it, there's a whole background story about how that all worked out. Okay. Um, so this still small voice is when God gives you a sense or a tug to move in a certain direction. And Nehemiah described it as putting it in his heart, it says in Nehemiah 7. So God put it into my heart to assemble the nobles and officials and the common people 
for a registration by family. So God, you know, stirred something inside of him. In the book of 1 Kings, where we actually get the idea of a still small voice, we, we see the great prophet Elijah, who was going through a, a time where he needed to hear God's voice desperately. And this is what happened. God told him to go and to, to stand in front of a cave. And, and it says in, in 1 Kings 19, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord is about to pass by. And then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice came to him and said, you know, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now, wh why do you think God used that method with Elijah? And why do you think God uses a still small voice with us? It's because it requires us to listen closely. You know, if something is, is loud, you just try and shut it out, okay? Think of a crying baby or think of a, you know, a complaining parent all the time. You know, but when someone whispers to you, it means you have to lean in close and actively listen to understand. You know, God's still small voice, by definition, is small, which means that it's easy to miss. You know, I think most of us, if we're to be honest, we just wish God would speak through a megaphone, right? Uh, like the clouds apart, there'd be a trumpet sound from heaven, and then we'd you know, have our attention, and God would clearly speak to us in a thunderous voice and tell us exactly what he wants us to do. I remember when I was a young child thinking, why doesn't God just write in the sky, you know, Jesus is Lord, or I am the true God, follow me. But that's not the way of God. In the Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs uh, 25, he says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. In the New Testament, God, Jesus spoke in parables. And why was that? Uh, the same reason as what he says in Proverbs 25. He wanted to reveal a spiritual truth only to those who were searching for it and only to those who were leaning in. Because only those who are leaning in and listening will hear God's voice and understand his words and his ways. Now, there have been several times uh, in my life where I have sensed that God was saying something to me. And, and my sense is that probably you have too. Uh, even again this past week at staff meeting, someone said, you know, I never thought I heard God's voice until we're describing it this way. And then I'm realizing I've heard God's voice a whole lot. It's just that we need to um, begin to recognize and understand those promptings and nudgings are for him. Now, again, let me ask a question. How many of you have heard God's still small voice or promptings or, or nudging? Okay, so a lot of you are, are sensing that. That's, that's good. Okay, I'm going to invite the staff to come up here, and, and they're going to share some stories right now. And uh, just as they're coming, we have like six or seven stories. And... So these are, these are staff, so they, they're used to speaking like a long time, right? And so I, I said to them, like, you have to keep it to two or three minutes, and then the, and then the, the music's going to start playing, and we're going to you know, pull you off with the shepherd's hook. Uh, so if you hear part of their story and you're going, I would love to hear more about this because there's a lot more underneath the story than they're sharing. They're just telling you the moment. I would say, why don't you pull them aside and, and let them tell you the full-blown version of, of their story, okay? So let's, let's tune in now, and we're going to begin with, with Pastor Chet. Good morning. So the first uh, couple of stories I want to share with you actually have to do with angels. And the first one, uh, I was kind of a, a frontline witness to. The second one, I, I kind of feel like I, I may have interacted with with somebody that was an angel. So the first one is that I was leading a, an outreach team to England and I had a Swedish girl on the team who was a very timid, mild-spoken person. Actually, I asked Kristen for permission. Imagine Kristen, if you know Kristen, this was this girl. 
And we're on an outreach where we're supposed to be proclaiming the gospel. And this girl was always quiet, timid, you know, not up front at all. And it was around Christmas time. She was feeling lonely. And uh, she, we were staying in this one place where everybody hung out downstairs. And we had our, our places where we were sleeping upstairs. And she went upstairs. And I'm actually uh, talking with a group of people. And all of a sudden, she comes down the stairs and she's just shaking and crying, and she goes, Chet, I, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, like, what happened? Like, you know, and, and she goes, I'm not crazy. I wasn't dreaming. I'm not crazy. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> what happened? And she said, I've been just feeling down and missing my family and, and kind of just going, what's my purpose here? And I was praying and laying on my bed, and as I was sitting or laying there praying, all of a sudden, I heard this voice say, it's okay, I'm with you, you're not alone. And it was so clear that I opened my eyes and there is this guy sitting there cross-legged by me and just reached out, put their hand on me and then repeated what they said. And then they were gone. So she's like, that's why I'm here. I don't know what to do with that. What was that, you know? And now here's the thing that caught my attention. This girl went from being one of the more timid, mild-spoken people on our team to that when we needed to go somewhere and we needed someone to share a testimony about how they came to Christ or a hard situation that was kind of scary for some people on the team, all of a sudden she was like, I'll do it. I'll go share. And the ch she, her personality didn't change, but her boldness just went through the roof. And I sat there going, God, you're amazing. How when we hear your voice and you speak to us, you can change us in an instant. The second story was me leading an outreach in China. And we arrived at the airport. We got onto a bus, went to the place where we were living, and, and then we were supposed to go out from there and do ministry one day, got on a bus, got dropped off in Guangzhou City, like millions and millions of people in a part of the city that I had no idea we, where we were. And then when we got off the bus, I turned around to the, to the uh, team I was leading and they were just like, where are we? And I'm like, I have no idea. And there was people everywhere and all of a sudden, this, this young guy comes up to us, and in perfect English, he goes, can I help you guys? And I'm like, uh, yeah, we don't know where we are. We're trying to get to such and such a place. And he was like, oh, okay, I'll help you. We, he showed us which bus to get on. We got on it. 45 minutes later, we arrived at the place that we were, or needed to be, and, and he goes, it's right over there. That's where you need to go. And I was like, thank you so much. And I turned around to the team and I was like, hey, you guys, we just got to go over here. But let's thank him for, you know, helping us out and turned around and the guy was gone. Now, there was a few people around, but we could not find him in this sort of crowded, not overly crowded room. He was just gone. And I turned back to our team and they were like, that's bizarre. Like, where did he go? And I can't prove it, but I just sat there going, I think this was an angel that was sent to us that could speak perfect English in central China to guide us to where we needed to be. Good morning. So a part of my, some of you already know this story when I shared before, but when I was younger, I was incredibly insecure. I was very shy to the point that I needed to phone student loans and I remember stand, standing at the phone and picking up the phone and hanging it up and picking up the phone and hanging it up because I was so concerned how the person on the other end was going to think of me. Someone I didn't know, someone who was going to answer a question that I'm sure many people had already asked them, but I was so insecure that I was afraid to make that phone call. Now, a lot of people didn't realize how insecure I was um, because I coped with it fairly well. I mean, I thought I coped with it fairly well. I uh, 
did everything I could to make sure that I was good enough at everything I did for everyone I came across. I pretended I was confident. I had a mask on all the time. I, but I was exhausted and I was worried about what people thought of me all the time. At one of the last CNC retreats that I attended before I became on staff here, I remember sitting during the um, communion time on Saturday night and I was just sitting there and I was talking to God and just saying, I'm so tired. I can't do this anymore. I worry all the time what people think of me. And I just, I can't. I was exhausted and overwhelmed. And at that moment, no one else heard it, but I very clearly heard an audible voice that said something along the lines of, it doesn't matter what they think. All that matters is what I think. At that point, I knew deep inside that it was God who was talking to me, that he was speaking to me directly, and that he loved me, and regardless of what anybody else thought, that's all that mattered. It didn't matter what I did or what I said, that he was still going to love me. The moment that I accepted that truth, and it wasn't like I stood up and was like, God, yes, I believe you, it was deep inside I don't even recall saying, okay, God, I believe you. It was just that moment when I accepted that. It actually felt like there had been physical chains that had been wrapping around me, and they just let go. I could feel that, and I was a completely different person. I had a confidence that I hadn't had before. I remember coming back from the retreat and actually talking to Pastor Layton and saying, yeah, this Thanksgiving thing that's coming up, I think that I'm actually supposed to get up in front of everybody. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, but I went from a person who had trouble making a phone call to somebody I didn't know, to someone who stood up in front of a thousand people at a conference and shared about something I was passionate about. And I am forever grateful that God took that moment and said, doesn't matter what other people think. All that matters is what I think of you. Okay. So uh, my wife and I, we were on our way to India to be missionaries in Kolkata. And uh, we had everything set up. Uh, it's a long story how we got there. But I said to my wife, I said to Karen, we need to hear from God. We have had everything put in place, but we need to hear very clearly from God that this is his idea and not our idea. So there was this mountain near the place where Karen's parents stayed that was called the Prayer Mountain. And we arranged to go there to go and fast and pray for three days. And on our way there, uh, we took some coffee and tea and, and, and some some bread and uh, some wine that we would, or actually grape juice, so that we would break the fast at the end of three days with, with communion. But on the way there, there was this deep feeling in my heart that we should just drink water, nothing else, no tea and no coffee. And uh, I, I said that to Karen, and she said, uh, you know that she feels the same. Um, she wants to do that too. So when we got there, on the second day, things were not going well. It felt as if we were um, there for 40 days already. I was extremely weak. Karen had a, a, a problem of an ulcer when she was a little younger. That started to act up. And so I said to her, you know what, let's break the fast, at least get something in our body so that this ulcer of yours would be a little bit better. And as we did that, there was this when it was all finished, there was this deep sense of condemnation that came over me. And I felt, I felt very, very weak. I felt like uh, we're not going to make it. This is only two days. How are we going to make it in India for many, many years? And I told Karen, I said, you know, we blew it. Uh, I don't know why we're here. I don't know what we're doing here. So Karen, my wise wife, who's such a, a special person, said to me, Jesus is our Father. He loves us. He knows our hearts. Why don't we just go down on our knees and pray and ask him to still speak to us, to forgive us this moment of our weakness. And so we went up the mountain 
Um, and this is a large mountain, so if you go up, there were various routes you could go up. And um, if you're on the one side of the mountain um, and someone's on the other side, you won't know they're there. There's these various routes that you could go. So we went up on the mountain that morning, and I said to Karen, you know what, why don't you sit on this rock and, and I'll read it and I'll ask uh, you know, I'll open the Bible to get a scripture and you go sit on the rock on that side and let's come back and let's see what God is saying to us. So when we got back, the scriptures were different. It was even different testaments. And, I've, and, and again, the sense of, of, of just not being able to make the mark, just being weak. And my words to Corin was, we are useless. I said that to her. And as those words were still floating around, we heard this huffing and puffing coming up on the side of the mountain. And there was a man and a lady that just walked up the mountain and really he had what looked like a white robe and long hair. And I thought, this is Jesus coming to speak to us. And I was like, can you believe this? And the lady that was with him was, we found out, nine months pregnant. And yet they're laboring up this mountain. And as they walked up to me, this guy looked at me straight in the eyes and he said to me, I want you to know that Jesus says to you, you are not useless and I am sending you. And Corin and I was just blown away. What is going on? Where did this guy come from? I mean, we were expecting him to just disappear, you know, like, like what happened to Chet. Where's this, where they go? And so as we were walking down, I asked him, where do you come from? How do you know we were here? And he told us that him and his wife are missionaries in Egypt. And they were on furlough and they were driving past this road. And God clearly spoke to him and said, I have a message for two people on the mountain. And so he drove up and he asked the lady who owned the place, is there two people that are on the mountain? And she said, yes, but she doesn't know where they are. And they took the specific route that we walked to get to the place where we were. If they took another route, they wouldn't have found us. They wouldn't have seen us. And to us, that was just that incredible, incredible reality of God speaking. And we knew that he was sending us. Amen. Good morning. So I'll be sharing about how God spoke to me through other people, mainly through a sermon. As you know, I am from Jordan, but I was working in Qatar for a pharmaceutical company in sales and marketing. I stayed in Qatar 14 years. And in my seventh or eighth year being there, I started feel like hearing God or feeling that God wants me to leave Qatar. And that was not an easy decision for me because I was having a good job. I was active member in the church there and why to leave Qatar, where to go. Even my immigration file to Canada was not finalized, so I only had to go to Jordan, but what to do in Jordan? So it took a long time for me, like hearing this feeling that God wants me to leave. And I was sharing with some brothers and sisters in the church there. Until that day, I, I, it was Friday, and our main meeting at the church was on a Friday because there was, that was the holy day in, in, in that region. So I, I told the Lord, I need to hear directly from you what I need to do in Jordan or wherever you want to take me. If you want me to leave, I will leave, but tell me what to do. And in that day, there was a preacher coming or visitor to the church. He was preaching on that day. He was not from Qatar. He came from Egypt. And when he stood in the, you know, to speak, he said, hey, let's open Hebrews 11 chapter 8 and he said by faith Abraham when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance he obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going and from the time that he read that verse I knew that God was speaking directly to me and the whole sermon was because I will never forget that sermon that in the journey of obedience, you need to obey, and then God will reveal more things to you. So when we went back from the church on that day, Russia was beside me in the car, and David was still a baby in the back seat. I didn't tell Russia anything. I told her, 
what did you get from the message today? And she said that God wants us to leave from Qatar. And then the next day, and the first thing in the morning in my office, I sent my manager in Kuwait, because I was alone in Qatar. I was the only representative for that company in Qatar. I sent him uh, my resignation letter, and it was a shock for everyone, why you are leaving. But I obeyed, and after that happened in January 2011, and now more than 10 years, I trust that I did the right thing and I obeyed God. So <clears throat> my story um, happened when I was about 17 or 18. I had uh, probably about a year prior to this uh, just given my life to the Lord. I was very, very young in my faith. I didn't know a whole lot at that point, but I had a habit of kneeling down, physically kneeling down beside my bed to pray uh, pretty much every night. I didn't know you could pray like sitting up or other ways. I just didn't, didn't know that it was possible. So I just knelt down and while I was praying, and again, I'm about 17, almost 18 at this time. Um, as I was praying, I had a, a vision or like a picture in my mind's eye. And while I was praying, I, I saw this picture, this image, and it was of me, but I was preaching in my, home, in my then home church in Birch Hills. Up until this point, I had had no inclination towards formal ministry. I had, had no desire necessarily to ever preach or speak or teach or do anything of that sort. But I can distinctly remember that moment of seeing that vision in my mind's eye. And afterwards, after I had had that moment, I began reading the Bible just with this greater sense of understanding, but also a greater sense of, I don't just need to read this for myself, but I actually need to read this because I think that I'm going to be a, I believe I'm going to need to speak this someday. It just awoke in a hunger and a desire within me to study the scriptures diligently and seek God in that way. So that's my little story. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, the story I'm going to tell today actually happened pretty recently. Um, it was just this past summer. I it was a day off, and you know, I was heading to Warman, just going to run a few errands, just you know, just a normal day. And um, no sooner had I got into Warman, where um, I actually came across a panhandler on one of the corners there, and. It, if you've ever been in Mormon, you know, that's kind of actually a, quite a rare sight to see. So initially, that right away has got my attention. And then um, when I drove past him, I noticed his sign. And it didn't have much on there, but it just said, asking for kindness. And that just really struck me. And as I drove past him, um, pretty soon thereafter, I actually got a prompting. And... Um, it was just, you need to buy this man some food. So I, you know, just kept going and zipped on over to the grocery store and picked up a few things like a sandwich and fruit and water and a few other things. And not even knowing if he would still be there by the time I got back. Um, but he was. So I uh, parked in the lot adjacent to him and... Um, like Chet alluded to, I'm like very much an introvert, so going to a complete stranger and making small talk is 100% out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but I, I, I took that step of faith and, you know, kind of walked with shaking steps towards this man. And, um, and after a few minutes of talking with him, it was, oh, it just broke my heart. He had got here from Alberta and lost most, if not all, of his possessions, and he just had the bag on his back, and, um, and yeah, after, you know, just before I left, I said, you know what, I said, I just wanted to let you know that God loves you, and I'll be praying for you, and it was, it's an experience that will stick with me for, for a very long time, and, um, yeah, so I just wanted to encourage you that, um, a prompting can be for, 
you know, very grand things or, you know, kind of minor things, um, such in my case. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Well, 11 years ago, I was approaching the first Christmas with my husband, Daryl, who had passed away six months prior. And despite enjoying a mostly loving and caring relationship, because we all know that every marriage has its challenges, but um, in spite of that, now I was having constant thoughts about all the ways that I had failed Daryl. began to doubt that he had even loved me at all. These thoughts didn't make sense, yet there they were and they were keeping me in a really dark place. I didn't tell anyone about my struggle because I was too ashamed. Well, Christmas arrived and my children and I decided to go to Daryl's grave to remember and to lay some mementos that carried memories for each of us. And on the side of that cemetery uh, is a little chapel and we slowly uh, wandered into this chapel after our time at his grave. My daughter, Lindy, and her husband, Luke, and our very first grandson, who is two years old, we were attending Ebenezer at this time. And for some reason, uh, Ben had taken a real liking to Pastor Layton. And we often were very, uh, we were so amused because he'd get so excited to come to church to see Pastor Layton. <laughs> that should help to, <laughs> from the earlier disappointment. <laughs> so as we crowded into this little chapel, uh, my grandson's auntie lifted him up behind the pulpit and said, okay, Ben, you preach like Pastor Layton. Well, this little two-year-old sought me out at the back of the chapel, looked straight at me and said, Grammy, you were very good to Papa, and he loved you very much. It took me a moment to register what my two-year-old grandson had spoken, and as it did, Healing tears began to flow as I realized that these could not be the thoughts and words of a two-year-old. Rather, I recognized the voice of my Heavenly Father, who loved me and wanted me to be free of the lies of the enemy, and I was healed. Amazing stories, aren't they? And uh, I just want to remind you uh, that, that God speaks to people today. And he longs for you to hear his voice. And whether that's through a, an audible voice, or whether that's through an angelic encounter, or the miraculous, or through other people, or through his, his still, small voice, uh, God, God wants us to hear his voice. And the question is, um, are we listening? And, are, and if we are hearing him, are we willing to obey? Because hearing is one thing, and obedience is a, is a totally other thing. Now, in this series, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help us to become more aware of God's voice and more attentive to it. And, you know, it would be great for us to have just story after story about how God spoke to us here and encouraging us. And I think we'd see that, that some of those things follow themes. And what I loved about the stories this morning is that some of the stories like spoke to, to the need or the hurt in our heart. And all of us have doubts at times, right? Uh, but when God speaks to us, sometimes it's not just about our own thing. It's about his thing, about what he wants us to do and to be obedient to that. I'm going to invite the worship team to come up and, and we'll close with one song. And just as they're coming, I'll I would like to pray. So, Father, uh, may you uh, take your word from Scripture, your Logos word, and your Rhema word, your personal word from the people that spoke, and may you uh, deeply um, put, impact us in ways that will change us and transform us. God, help us to be attentive to your voice in our lives through uh, the big miraculous ways and through the smallest ways. That we, would be, we would be people that, that know our shepherd's voice and follow you and obey you. And so guide us as we do those things, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's stand as we close. As we sing this last song, feel free to just cry out to God and listen to what he says back to you. And if that means that you need to kneel or sit or stand, just be able to 
engage with him and hear his voice. standing for the benediction from Second Peter. And it says this, May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now to the day of eternity. Amen. So go today with the power, the presence, and the voice of God in your ear. Amen? Amen. Thanks for being with us.